Hi, please come. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. It's good not morning. morning. It's evening. Good, good evening. Come. Good evening, ma'am. Up to half the shirt soaked already. No, no, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Please sit down. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thank you. You get, you know, the, you get used to saying good morning. So everyone yes, says good morning. Yes, ma'am. But you are not a good morning person, right? I'm. I'm sorry, ma'am. No, that's okay. I'm fine. So where have you studied? Uh, I've studied computer science engineering from Punjab Engineering College, Chandigarh. Chandigarh, oh, that's a lovely place. Yes, ma'am. Is it very hot just now in Chandigarh? Uh, not very hot, ma'am. Not ma very. Pleasant. Yes. Delhi bad? Uh, today it was pleasant, okay. but otherwise. otherwise I think yes. <laughs> okay, now tell me how, how do I pronounce your name? It's Gamini. 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 What does Gamini mean? The one who is always on move. Move, moving person. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> So tell me, I'm told that the European Union has come to India, one rep has come and the idea is to pursue a trade deal with India so as to reduce the trade ties with Russia. That's okay. what I'm told. So do you think it's like that or it's something else? Uh, I'm sorry ma'am, I did not get the exact... Okay, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Some European Union person, has dignitary is visiting India. Okay. Right? And I am told that they have come to pursue a trade deal with okay. India. Okay. So as to cut off, I mean not cut off totally, but reduce ties with Russia. Okay. Have you heard such a thing or you don't think it's correct? Uh, Ma'am, I am unaware of it. Mm -hmm. But if you say so, then there might be some... some something to it. Yes. Why are so many foreign dignitaries wanting to come to India in the high heat of summer? About five, six of them have already come and gone. Why yes. do they want to come? Yes, ma'am, it's right. It's because of the existing geopolitical situation, because mm. of the Russia-Ukraine crisis, mm. and because of the visits of the dignitaries, it can be seen that India holds a very important position. And everybody feels that India has, has a good role to play as a facilitator mm. of the resolution of the dispute. So many dignitaries are visiting here to know our opinion and to even tell what their opinion is on the issue mm. and to find a resolution to this but humanitarian But do you think crisis. we have taken a stand? On Ukraine, we haven't taken a stand. We have not voted. We have not taken a stand so far, to my knowledge. So, uh, do you think we can still take a stand? Uh, I think, ma'am, we have taken a neutral stance mm. and we have taken a stance that the things should be resolved through peaceful dialogue, dialogue. and through bilateral dialogue. So, okay. that is the stance that India has maintained. Tell me that uh, the US Secretary of State was also around, one of them. So, he says that uh, I am going to Kiev, he is going to visit Kiev. Now, there is a lot of bombardment, lot of problem. Why is he going there? Can you an analyze that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Mm. Uh, ma'am, one thing, one I think is that the bombardment now is mainly limited to the eastern Ukraine. Okay. So, he might not be facing so much danger in Kyiv per se. Mm. And secondly, it's also a kind of symbolic visit that USA stands with the Ukrainian people mm. in this kind of humanitarian crisis that the Ukrainians are facing. Mm. And thirdly, to have a meet with the Ukrainian... Uh, yes, yes. So... Uh... Is India growth resilient? Are we growth resilient as a country? Uh, Ma'am, in my knowledge, mm. uh, growth resilience means that we are able to grow mm. despite the crisis, yeah. whichever is going. Uh, yes, Ma'am, I think we are moving towards growth resilience, <laughs> but still because we are interconnected with the world, the uh, entire geopolitical situation is bound to affect our economy as well. Mm -hmm. So, in that per se, I think for example, the crude oil prices which are high and that has uh, led to inflation in India. Mm -hmm. So, we are not totally isolated. But having said that, we are secure because of our high forex reserves we have. On the exports part, we have been doing very well. So, we can say that we are moving towards growth resilience. What, do, what is the rate of petrol in Delhi? Do you have any idea? Uh, Ma'am, exact rate, I do not. Chandigarh, know. what is it? Uh, One litre, you don't. I don't, don't drive? drive? I do not drive. You do not drive, that's why. Right. right, sir. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am. Can I ask you some women related questions? Because sure, they sir. may be asked to you, so it's a mock interview. Number one, you come across the news that Taliban in Afghanistan banned the women education. They are not allowed to study. So, what is your take on that? 
like you are talk, like, talking about the bigger countries, they're working for resolution, Indian diplomacy you praised just now. So what do you think in your mind? What can India do or other world leaders do to stop Taliban from stopping the women? What do you think? Well, I think that this is very unfortunate of Taliban to having banned girls from attending the educational yeah. institutes. Yeah. And India as a neighboring nation, I think has... Neighboring nation means India. Does it have borders with Afghanistan? Yes, sir. We yeah. have a very smart Vakhan corridor. Where? Uh, in the north west. Are you sure? Yes, sir. We have a border with uh, Afghanistan. With Afghanistan. Yes. Sir. Okay. So, uh, sir, yes, India has a role to play. So, I think that any step that India has to take, uh, it should be again to peaceful dialogue. We can, we need to convince Taliban that the rights of the women should be protected there, and they cannot be some aggressive stance from India. We must not take some aggressive stance, but again, we should persuade Taliban, and uh, we should hold bilateral meetings that this kind of situation must be avoided. And the importance of the education of the women is something which needs to be conveyed time and again, even to the uh, association like Taliban. But India does not recognize the Taliban regime. How can it enter into a bilateral dialogue? So once, uh, the, if the Taliban has uh, acquired, the, if it forms the government in Afghanistan, we do not recognize. It is already in power. It has a government. Yes, sir. so once we have a stance over that and once we maintain, uh, establish our embassy again in Afghanistan, only then we can enter into a dialogue with them. Till then we are only able to till, send the humanity. Till then we allow the women to suffer. So we have sent some humanitarian assistance from our side. That's what we can no, about do. Specifically about the women's education, I'm talking. Uh, so for that, we cannot take an uh, official stance right now. We cannot enter into an official dialogue with Taliban, I think. We will have to explore other options. Okay. Tell me another question is that what is your view about the hijab controversy? Some uh, women in Karnataka, they had gone to give their exam. And so they were wearing hijab, they were not allowed. What is your personal take on that as a woman? Uh, so as a woman, I think the law of the country should be abided and whatever the High Court has suggested and whatever guidelines the High Court has given, that should be respected by all the women. So once the matter is in the judicial eye and once they have given their, uh, their proceedings or whatever judgment they have given, they have the right to appeal. But until and unless the matter is resolved, they must abide by whatever the judgment is so given. So that what you are talking is, Gamini uh, is a legal recourse, strictly legal. What, from the social point of view, what is your thought? As a woman, what do you think? This is a legal thing. Yes, sir. Sir, as a woman, it has both the sides. One is that hijab, hijab is seen as a symbol of lack of freedom for the woman. It is being perceived on that note. But secondly, sir, I think educationally also, women uh, should be educated. And if we do not, uh, if we deny education to women just be, because their attire is not fit, so it has a larger repercussion that the woman will be denied education. So that is something that we cannot afford. Okay. Last question to you. Have we heard the name of Abu Salem? Uh, Recently his name was in the news. Very uh, much in the news. Yes. Abu Salem. Who is he? Um, so he is a person who was involved in the 1993 attacks. And now uh, he has uh, appealed in the highest court. And now vis a -vis the uh, the... Uh, whatever uh, commitments India has made to Portugal. So, vis a vis that like, we have. Like what commitment? Uh, so, there was a commitment that we will not uh, extend more. Uh, his imprisonment will not be that of more than 25 years of imprisonment. So, India has uh, taken the stance that that issue can only be reconsidered only in 2030 when 25 years of imprisonment are over. So, today it needs <coughs> not to take into consideration that okay. thing. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Indian police service is your second choice. Uh, if you get it by chance, will you take it? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any role model in the IPS among the lady officers? Uh, mm -hmm. So, one is the first woman IPS officer, uh, mm -hmm. Ms. Kir uh, Ms. Kiran Bedi. Mm -hmm. And second is now a lot of women are entering, even our immediate seniors. I have some names who have been doing very well. Mm -hmm. Like we hear about IPS Navjot Simi ma'am. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there, these, type, these women have inspired me a lot. Mm -hmm. Any particular thing which uh, inspires you? 
particular attribute which is expired if you like uh so the particular about talking about the particulars i would say that the confidence that they can do uh, a job which is not believed that women can do and the grit with which they are pursuing their job and the confidence is something that i oh, admire that's very nice okay tell me in nilesh mishra's story what exactly appeals to you there are many things that appeal to me in his mm. stories one is the nobility is of it not all sob stories <laughs> no no sir no. uh hmm. so i think there might be sob stories as well hmm. Hmm. but there are other stories as well for example yeah. like uh, what i like about his stories is number one is the novelty of the idea hmm. so every story has a different kind of issue to tackle with hmm. so things are also different eh? uh, lots of settings so i hear the audio uh, stories only ah, okay. nee, setting means the the setting That's in right. which a story has been woven yeah. yes sir yes sir That's definitely and secondly sir sound effects so yeah. in every story so whenever he wants to demonstrate a sound for example of a passing train mm -hmm. so the sound of the passing train will be heard mm -hmm. so that is something which which makes me relate to the story and thirdly the manner in which he tells the story from different perspectives mm -hmm. and takes the place of different actors and then he speaks very differently for each actor Okay. So these are the things that I like. In uh, about. from computer science and engineering, you see, we have borrowed many uh, ideas and then come out with a product called CCTNS. Yes. Have you heard about it? Yes, sir. Tell me about the, some technical side of it, which is related to computer science and engineering, not the humanities side. Oh. CCTNS. so cctns is also an electronic database which is mm -hmm. shared across the police stations and the agencies mm -hmm. so we use computer science because it is being shared electronically mm -hmm. and any one place where the data is recorded it can be shared to the others and a database that is being created then we can even apply the principles like big data to do the data how do we uh, how do we plan to update the data how the data is created yes sir how do we update them uh so like same data is to be updated i did not get the question sir sorry uh, you see suppose 10 crimes have happened in a police station yes those sir. 10 crime records is already there in the cct yes 11th crime also occurred yes sir how do we update that uh, database so we do a new entry to the database mm -hmm. and then it will be recorded in the database and it will be shared across the uh, police station question, suppose we give freedom to everyone to enter into the database and update it and somebody may simply play havoc with the system and uh, uh, update in such a way that it, uh, the entire data will become meaningless how do we in general how do we regulate that so for that we need to take multiple steps one mm -hmm. is the authentication of the data for example whoever is entering the data will have to enter it through a password it should mm -hmm. be password protected mm -hmm. then there should be firewall security to prevent any kind of cyber attack and only authentic agency should be able to upgrade it mm -hmm. so we need to encrypt the system and that encryption key should only be with limited agencies whoever are authorized to do that. and we have, what we have done that uh, we have put values in such a way that you cannot enter absurd values okay sir mm, thank you some uh, section is p68 yes sir then you cannot enter 1032 okay yes that's sir that's not permission okay thank you there sir there are ways and means to correct it okay thank you right sir. thank you sir so dominic today is an important day yes are you aware uh yes sir one of the important uh events that occurred on 24th of april was the panchayati raj institutions were established yeah on the day So why do we need uh, panchayati raj institution? There are very few countries in the world, perhaps one or two, Switzerland, where there is a three-tier system of government. We have central government, we have state government. What is the need of having the third tier of government? Uh, Sir, so India as a country is hugely populated. and third tier of the governor uh, third tier of the panchayat third tier that is the panchayati raj institutions they have a specific purpose of decentralized governance and secondly involvement of the people in decision making and thirdly they have also taken the step towards women empowerment mm -hmm. by offering one third reservation to women so it uh, intends to bring the people and so that they own their own programs and they become self reliant okay. 
Uh, recently, uh, about three weeks back, uh, there was some controversy with regard to transfer of Chandigarh. Yes, there was sir. a resolution passed by Punjab Assembly, which was immediately countered by resolution from Haryana. Yes, Assembly. sir. What is your view on this? Uh, sir, I think that the status quo should be maintained mm -hmm. because it has been working for years. And even oh. both the states have had their capitals there. We have the required infrastructure. So I think the status quo should continue. And Chandigarh should remain a UT and a joint capital of both Punjab and Haryana. Okay. Now there is a problem of, uh, you see, uh, stubble burning. And Punjab is one of the, uh, I think, main contributor. Yes, sir. Uh, along with Haryana. So how a district magistrate of Batinda district, say, for example, you would uh, motivate farmers, you, you will... Uh, Make sure that this stubble burning is not resorted. There are two, three quick methods you can adopt. Some good work has been done by Ambala district collector recently. Are you aware? Uh, sir, I'll have to read about it. I'll definitely okay. go and read. Yeah. Uh, sir, if I'm given the opportunity, yeah. so I will take, uh, I will have to take multiple steps to deal with the issue. Firstly, it would be the making accessible the technologies like Happy Cedar and Rota Better. Yeah. And for that, I think the, the financial accessibility is the problem. For that, we need to make farmers aware about the rental, about how they can lease, take, it, take these technologies on lease, so that it is not a financial burden on them uh, to uh, take these technologies. Secondly, sir, I would also try to work that uh, the stubble can be reused. For, so that the farmers get adequate share for this stubble also and it automatically becomes an incentive for them. For example, stubbles can be used for the production of biogas, yeah. bioethanol, even for the shelters we can use the stocks yeah. and even for the cattle feed that can be used. So second would be that. And thirdly, sir, I will try to leverage technology. So we have heard about a scheme called Uber for tractors. Mm -hmm. So like that we can also have Uber for happy seeders so that they can just take it on the lease through technology. And uh, for oh, thank you, thank okay. you, sir. Now, my next question is that one of your hobby is the model UN. Yes, sir. So, what, what is this? You participate in some model UN? Uh, this thing? Yes, sir. So, so, model United Nations, as the word suggests, is a model of the United Nations. Okay. We have different assemblies like UN General Assembly, mm -hmm. All India Political Party Meet, UN so, all, all India a permanent member in your UN model in the U United Nations Security Council. Sorry, sir. Was in, in your UN model. Did you put India as a permanent member or not? No, sir. We try to. And the model you should have put India is trying to ask. So we debate on those lines and okay. we try to because every candidate is given a different country. So okay. it's not from the point of view of India alone. Okay. So one one candidate is representing Norway, one might be representing USA. So we try to model it. And the basic purpose is that the students can learn to think as delegates. Okay. So and I myself have participated in all India political party meets a lot. Oh, right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ramani, modeled apart, uh, what's happening in reality? I mean, Ukraine is bleeding. <laughs> Russia is bombing it. Western countries have committed that they wouldn't take on Russia directly. They're using Ukraine to use their ammunition and get killed. And there is this UN almost non-existent. Do you think that the international order needs to be recalibrated? We are in for a different kind of mechanism for multilateral negotiations and uh, international deliberations and the way peace resolution conflicts. What's happening? Uh, so, it's a hard reality that though United Nations has worked very well in the social and the economic areas, but in some kind of political crisis, it has not been able to find resolution. That is mainly because of the reforms that needs to be taken. Because uh, currently only in this UN Security Council, whatever resolutions are passed are binding, while the UN GAA resolutions are not binding in the countries. And in the UN Security... Just visualize, since you are participating in UN uh, models and so forth, had India been a permanent member yes, sir. in the Security Council, had it uh, taken a position contrary to what it has taken just now? Sir, uh, so I have to imagine that India is a permanent member? Yes. Okay. Uh, 
so sir then again we will have to study the matter again uh, being a permanent member of the un security council and if this is the reform that you were alluding to so the reform that i meant to say was giving permanent membership and also regarding the veto we need to make reforms what are that uh, so as we know that to abolish the veto we will have to amend the un charter which is not feasible right now but i think we can make other changes to the veto one is that making veto only a choice when there are certain threats to the national security second some kind of qualified veto that only if a certain amount of uh, member countries pass a resolution then the veto cannot be held so some kind of regulations on the veto so that one country is not uh, always able to withhold what is necessary for the entire population <laughs> i think some kind of this international order is premised on an acceptance globally that the sovereignty will be vested on a nation state yes sir right do you think given the situation we need to rethink even about this the ultimate sovereign power that is to be exercised can be exercised only by the nation sir yes sir i think the sovereignty is the prime thing that a country's sovereignty must be protected uh, sir I'm sorry i i'm unable to get the exact question sir uh, globally yes sir sovereignty is vested in which agency is it vested in individuals is it vested vested in say uh, provinces of a state is it vested in some international agency it is vested only with the, the nation state yes so they are free to do whatever right do you think time has come to rethink this vesting of sovereignty this is a modern principle sir right i believe that there should be an international rules based order as india has been propagated and every country has the right to protect its sovereignty but at the same time the countries should not go ahead and snatch the sovereignty and the security of the other countries so the rules based order need to be established where every country is responsible for their actions and i think that should be the new norm okay who is your favorite sociological thinker uh sir personally i like professor milder kain okay and uh, what are his views it's his or her his sir his. okay so what are uh, his views he has taken a functionalist approach hmm. to the uh, whatever social structures are there so um, why i like him the most is because i think that he has tried to find positive with every scenario so one of the thing is about the division of the labor so if i could explain that sir uh -huh. it's about moving from the mechanical solidarity to the organic solidarity since you talking about darkheim or darkheim okay yeah yes sir hmm. so in the division of the labor he talks about moving from one kind of solidarity to the others he says the solidarity is still which, there which of the two is stronger as per darkheim so as per the solidarity or mechanical solidarity so as per him both are trying to unify the people but in different manners although the kaim says no, that the categorical choice he says that this solidarity <coughs> is more strong so as Mr. compared to the other the professor der kaim says that the collective conscience has declined in the organic solidarity in the modern times and that is why anomy is coming so in the uh, in the earlier times the mechanical solid solidarity was such that the collective conscience was very strong and the restraint on the people was very high but in the modern state the restraint is decreasing and the organic solidarity sometimes is unable to compensate for that for that kind makes a very provocative statement crime is good in what context does he say so uh, so he has taken a functionalist approach to crime as well so uh, so i think i need to read more about the crime portion that uh, kaim has dealt with i'll read more about it okay now oh, gamini please sit down thank you ma'am so it was a pleasure to talk to you you are cheerful thank you are you, positive you have a good personality and you uh, confident you appear confident you don't sort of shy away You don't know. You say I'm sorry. I don't know. Fair enough. 
Okay, and you have qualities of an officer according to me. Thank you, right? So you are quite well informed. You are decisive in your statement. You decide is it right or wrong. It might be okay, right? So, sir, up, Bully. Um, very good candidate, I would say. And lots of confidence is shown uh, in your dialogue delivery. Cheerful also. Maintain the same pace. Uh, a bit improve upon the contents. Yes. That will really work wonders yes. in all the areas. Whether your own computer science engineering is there or the area of sociology. Yes. In the area of sociology, just whatever time you have, once again go through those basic uh, theories of principal, whatever it is called. Yes. When is your interview? It's on 12th of May. 12th of May. Yeah. So, one time brush up, kariye, wo sociology is better. Yes. 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 Much डोमेन एक्सपर्टीज सेट कैन बी री इनफोर्स लिटिल बिट वी सर बी योर कंप्यूटर साइंस टेक्नोलॉजी अबाउट योर प्रेजेंस एंड पोस्टर्स एंड सो फॉर यू अपियर राधर ईगर समवेयर डाउन द लाइन मे बी समवेयर एट द बैक ऑफ योर माइंड यू थिंक दैट गिविंग पॉज इज नॉट गुड Actually, pause is such a wonderful communication technique yes, that you can leverage to good effect. You have it in you. You, 
have such a wonderful personality that you can use it to good end. Okay, so sure. I will rather add to the overall gravitas of your personality. Okay, sir. Right. Okay, sir. Thank so, you. Uh, just pause a little, and then, and then speak as if you are giving it a serious thought, and you mean business. That okay. kind of a thing, and you are not at all nervous. Yes, sir. Right. Think about it. You have time. Definitely. Otherwise, you are. I would request you to wear a sari. Yes, ma'am. I would wear a sari that yeah. day. But pra practice it if you don't wear sari. Okay, ma'am. Yes, I will. Put them practice. here and there and walk with confidence. Okay, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, if I may ask a question from please. sir, ma'am. Sir, that question of the women and uh, how India should respond. So, what should be our answer? Because we are not maintaining a dialogue. Sir, you cannot be completely acceptable to the different families. Basic thing, number one. As I said, brevity. We should be very brief. You know that we should do this, do this. So it is diverting from the main topic. That India should mobilize and people go to India to put pressure on it. Yes. Everyone wanting, number one, it is wanting recognition. Recognition. Number two, it is wanting Yes. So the diplomatic mandarins no brainstorming and pressurizing. So yes. India should take a lead in mobilizing. It cannot enter into talks because yes. if you don't know a subject and if you then you are revealing your inherent weaknesses more than your interests. Isn't it? Yes. Unless you are sure and you know that your arguments you can fall back upon. Yes. The back, which is not there. So therefore, be brief to the point. Yes. And India has not awarded any recognition to Taliban. So this question of bilateral talks does not. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. No, it's. Madam, which way? Yeah. Ah, uh, Molly. Sir, 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 those sovereignty wala questions, jo tha sir, ma, asa me ko abhi bhi thoda sa dar. Ah, me kya hai? So what should be the answer to that question? Like, what, in what manner could I have I answered the question of sovereignty? Ah, uh, you can straight away dismiss this proposition okay. that uh, modernity. Began your sociology student. That's why I uh, asked you this question. Mod one of the political parameter of modernity is that nation states are the sovereign unit, yes. right? And uh, maybe uh, we still don't have any viable alternative to it. We talk of globalization. We talk of uh, global village and so forth. But where will we? actually put sovereignty which agency will be vested with this critical power yes sir <laughs> question that is being bent yes sir right so you can straight away do away with this this is a limit I and mean, we have no answer to it so we will have to manage within this okay and let's reinforce the existing mechanism okay right but it should be categorical you were like going around it <laughs> but you should be categorical in this because certainly there is no alternative. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, okay. that Rama, you have sixty-eight percent according to us. Okay. Thank for you. For today's in, but you can go up. You are very confident. Okay. Sixty-eight targets to one eighty-five, seven. Okay. You might get in. You can go even half. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay.